chilling up and we are having fun. Let me tweak this thing down a little bit. Get that beautiful sweet tea in the air. <laughs> Hopefully everybody's doing well. I see we got someone out there. Let's see if we can read it in the comment sections. I'm off the phone, running it off the phone. We're just gonna do a quick fun video, have some fun. And hopefully you guys are enjoying your Sunday evening. Gamma Mill Ortiz. I, I, I think I said that wrong, but Mr. Ortiz, what up? John Rollins. Wait, wait for some few people to show up in here and see what's going on. Trying to get ready for... Uh, there's Tree Feller. I had a chance to talk to Tree Feller. Yeah, he says... I need to make the uh, the ammo turn it into the Twin Towers, which I thought was pretty cool. Frank Fur, Chris Estes, Drew Bradley. You bought me ammo you shouldn't have. Flexing on us pores again. No, 45 Auto, I'm not trying to show off. But what I am trying to do is show you guys that uh, what I say, I mean. Um, when, when I go out and find a lot that works. What's up, Scott? Um, actually go get it and uh, pick it up before it's gone. So in front of you, or right here, behind me is uh, 300 boxes of ammo. So that's three cases and it was very expensive. And hopefully this lasts me a few years. So I'm hoping it lasts me a few years. It, uh, it may, it may not, depending on how much practice and uh, time and energy I put into shooting rimfire, which I thoroughly enjoy. Probably one of my funnest things. Is that one week's worth? Yeah. No. No, that should last me at least, I'm hoping, two seasons. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how well it does. If it shoots like stupid, stupid sick, I probably won't. What's up, Razor JB? Just a few weekends. No. Uh, so, updates. We had a, we shot a match yesterday. Chris Simmons put on an, another amazing match, which was a lot of fun. Um, in the beginning, I started off weak, very weak. So I ended up getting 15th out of 40 shooters, I believe. Ray did pretty well. I think he got, I don't know, seventh, something like that. He was uh, trying out the new build, the new Remex, and there was... Two stages that he uh, probably could have shot a little better, but he did have an extraction problem trying to get that case out. He's working on that with uh, Eagle Eye, Mr. Kenny, because there is an upgrade to the Remex, depending on the serial number. They actually changed the extractor, so that should help him out, which would be pretty good because that rifle was shooting amazing. Definitely shooting amazing, but... Some of the things, so some of the issues, and Treefeller and I were talking about it. So he has a couple buddies that shoot exclusively Ely and um, quite and quite a few quite a few of his buddies. But there was one guy that shoots exclusively Ely, I guess, and he's been having some uh, light primer strikes or failure to fires. So with that said, so I called. I actually called. I think it was Friday. Yeah, Friday I called Voodoo. I told him, you know, just kind of asked him some questions about, you know, what issues they may or may not be having with certain types of ammo. I told him that I was getting a lot of, and when I say a lot of, out of the testing I did, I think I shot 250 rounds. I only had, which is a lot in the match, but there was 15, uh, 15 basically light primer strikes per se. So they're going to send me out a 20 pound spring. The normal Voodoo's, I think he said, has an 18-pound firing spring in it, or for the firing pin. So we'll see what the two pounds does. He does say that it will close. The bolt will be a little bit tougher to close, um, just due to the extra tension on the spring. We'll see if that's even noticeable or not. And then also the followers. So those of you that have been watching the channel in the past, when it comes to the the Voodoo mags, we have talked about it where we file down and basically bring that slant to a little steeper angle which helps to keep that tip of that bullet up and in turn you know that the bolt picks up the round a little bit easier um supposedly they have some yeah the red followers this is the thing that i had thought right so there's a red follower and a black follower and after talking to jason um 
at Voodoo, he says that those are actually the same angle. I had heard the same thing. I had heard that uh, the red one was for a certain ammunition and the black one was for, you know, like Cinerex and Lapua, say. I mean, one was for Lapua, one was for Ely. And he says that's actually not the case. It's the same angle. The one thing that he did say is they have a jig now, which is basically a belt sander and a jig that they actually run the followers through to get that angle that they want. So we'll see if that actually helps. Where's the sweet tea? It's right here, buddy. Actually, it's down here. Uh, Shazam. So he's. I think he's going to send me out six of those. I think I have eight mags, but um, six of them definitely figure out if that's the issue. Now, it could show up where that's the same, basically what we've already been doing. So that may or may not be a fix. I only had the one... Uh, failure to extract so we shall see <laughs> thanks Matt um, but that was a different lot of ammo that I didn't order I don't know if it was a little bit it was only one so you know out of 250 rounds it wasn't too big of a deal are you trying to be a Scrooge Mr. Duck pile up the gold uh, Jackson not so much just basically I want to confirm that I'll have enough ammo for the next at least season and a half Hopefully two seasons, maybe three seasons, if I can find, uh, which I do have a case of Ely, but it's a pistol, pistol match, I think is what it's called. And if that stuff is basically close to this, it's not going to shoot as tight of a group, at least in that rifle, but I might use that for the practice ammo and this for matches. If that becomes the case, that'll be cool because basically... I only need three boxes for a match, so I could almost shoot, well, let's just call it maybe 280 matches uh, with this ammo. So that's quite a bit of, quite a bit of uh, competition shooting. So, damn, that's a pile of Ely. How y'all doing? Doing good. So, no, it's not to uh, basically show that there's a bunch of ammo here and I basically captured quite a bit of that lot, at least from um, the company that I bought it from. I removed the finger tabs from my son's mag and have eliminated all feed issues. It lets the follower stop above the mag lips. He uses a loader to load them. I have heard that big country, you might have actually told me that. What I did was I took those out of the mags. Let me grab some. So what he's talking about is this button here. And on some of them, it protrudes past, past the walls here. So when you put it in there, you're not getting, uh, it's not, it's kind of binding up as it's going up. What I did, not to all of them, but to try some of them. And actually I think they're the ones down. Oh, here's a couple. You can kind of see right there, I actually dremeled them to more of a flush instead of them, you know, angled out. Easier, you know, it's it's just as easy to grab them even if I knock the, the angle out of them. But I did leave them in. I have heard that you can actually get a plus one more if you... If you get rid of this release, or you know, the pull tab. I don't know if that's the case. I did clean all these. Basically in here, there's some tracks that the uh, follower goes through. Those do gum up after a while. Those can make an issue. Some people prefer, <laughs> some people prefer these mags, which are the metal mags over the polys. And some people hate these mags and will only run the poly mags to get them. They feel like they work better in your rifle. So um, 15 round mags. Oh. Hopefully that works. Hold on a sec here. I just gotta make sure I'm charging. It says I got 20% life left. Stand by, let me flip this cord over. Hopefully that works. If not, the show will be a little shorter than normal. 
about a 3D printed feeder for Voodoo Mags, something like six bucks. So I bought three. Nice, well guy. Uh, tree filler, I'm still waiting on those Bagara plus twos. I haven't seen anything in an email, so we'll see when those show up. A 15 will hold 16 rounds, yeah. Um, but these are actually nice. It seemed like a lot of stages. And let me see. <clears throat> a lot of the stages, you can see this is the NRLX Fall Brawl. This one's put on by Chris Simmons. And then here's kind of my results. So I had a 10 out of 12. I was the 13th place out of 40 shooters. So I kind of said, just wanted to see where my results were. Uh, third out of 40, 37th out of 40. I really sucked at that one. Fifth out of 40, 21 out of 40, 15th out of 40, 10 out of 40, 16th out of 40. 32nd out of 40, 23rd out of 40, and 17th out of 40. So, a few matches I did really well at, and a couple are more stage, more stages I, you know, you do good. You got to be consistent in this game. You can, you can burn the doors off and do really well on a couple, and it still doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, if you have a, a stage that you just really did horrible at, that's going to put you down in the standings and uh, your chance of coming home with anything is really going <laughs> to... Actually, this, this story, uh, actually, if you suck at something, um, you get lucky because yesterday we had a random draw and uh, uh, Chris had a bunch of really nice stuff. He had some Leopold tripod, spotting scopes, a bunch of these glasses. Let me see here. Where'd it go? I gotta show you my new cool shades I got. There they are. So, how I got these, movie star, <laughs> um, was, was, uh, they called my name. I think I was like the second one to be called. And this is a random draw. So what I'm getting at is, Sometimes these matches, which some people agree with and some people don't agree with, I, I don't know either way. Yesterday I agreed with it per se, just because I won something. But at the end of the day, probably the top shooters should have got this stuff. But more than likely, the top shooters already have all this stuff. So it was kind of cool to get a random draw for those of us that maybe didn't do so well at the match. We have a possibility of winning. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I just yesterday I got lucky. So, and they had called my name up there. I know my buddy Matt P doesn't have a tripod. And it was a, it was a tripod by Leopold. That's how I say it. Leopold, Leopold. And I actually picked that up and gave it to Matt P. So, um, he ended up winning a six, like $600 uh, tripod, which was really nice, all carbon fiber. It looked like a Leaf Roto style. Um, it was nice, nice ball head on it. But uh, then they called his name a little bit, you know, a little bit later. And uh, he actually picked these up for me. So it was kind of cool. I got some sunglasses. I don't know if I officially am in love with these sunglasses yet, but I, I rode them all the way home, man. It was, a, it was a great day. It was a tiring day, but it was a lot of fun. Look, I can even read. But they're polarized. These are by... Leopold, 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 and um, they're pretty snazzy, came in a nice case, but yeah, I appreciate it, Matt, for uh, giving me these, but yeah, he walked away with a, an awesome prize, I walked away with an awesome prize, I didn't need a tripod, I could have pulled it, sold it, that wasn't what it was about, it was about uh, giving back to those that don't have stuff, and I know my buddy Matt P has always been needing a tripod, so um, I hooked him up. I hooked them up well. So now on the tripod stuff, let me show you guys what I picked up at Pig River. Um, just the other couple, what was it, two matches ago? So this here is the Armageddon gear. I talked about it, but I didn't have it on the tripod to kind of show you guys. Um, 
This thing works pretty dang awesome for PRS style shooting. I don't think it would work as great for ruck style matches because the stuff would come out a lot easier. Uh, appreciate that, uh, Carl. Um, so the like raised bag works, I think, much better for ruck style matches. But this one works pretty damn amazing for, for what PRS is. And that's basically, you just put your tripod down, use it for a spotting scope, use it for a range finder and use it if you needed to shoot off of it as well. But it's got this little table here, bench, and this works really well because you can kind of pour your ammo here, load it into your mags. I got my Kestrel, Kestrel in there. Got uh, some pins here, which is kind of cool because it always seems like the pin disappears. So there's, uh, there's three, one, three of them here. You could actually run dual Kestrels if you wanted. Or maybe your buddy, maybe you and your buddy are shooting off of the same one or whatever. Something that's nice about it as well is you, uh, it's set up for like a, a, oops, like kind of your match. You can fold this up and then it has this strap here. You can keep it in so the wind won't blow it away. But you also got your little book there that you can write stuff down on. And then this kind of just goes in here and it makes it so it won't open up. This can be for whatever, except sweet tea. Sweet tea won't fit in here, so that's kind of a bummer deal. But there's other spots for the sweet tea. So if you just saw me at the match, it would have been either here, <laughs> or there's actually a back pocket that I'll show you guys. And it's more of, it goes, it spans across the tripod legs. But it's nice because the mags, the mags go in here. They fit AICS mags really well. Or you could throw, I don't know, 50 CZ 457 mags in here. But yeah, the mags go in there really well. Of course, you can put whatever the heck you want in here. But it's got this pocket. This doesn't come with it. And then another big pocket there. So I, was, I, I really liked it. The light fixtures looks like speed something. Uh, this light fixture sucks. It doesn't, I cried him in one day when he's feeling better. Hopefully he comes over and uh, we replace it. But until Mr. Kreiderman gets fixed, we'll, we'll wait. But in here, you can see there's a, a basically a big shelf, and it works super well. So it goes around three of the legs, and you can fold it up and kind of collapse it so you can carry it to the, the next stage. Once you get to the next stage, you just deploy the legs again, and it's pretty awesome. So. But that's made by Armageddon gear. That may be something that, uh, and if you notice, not because people steal stuff, but it's easier for me to find my stuff. Uh, I got my name on everything, basically. Or on most everything. So if, if I drop a bunch of mags, I forget them, and two stages down the road, they can say, oh, it's Rick's. That knucklehead, he dropped his magazine. Because if there's no name on this, nobody knows. So I do mark my gear. And then here's the bag I showed you guys that one day. But this is also by Armageddon. It's got the Pig River logo on it, which is awesome. But you're gonna notice a cant here. There is a slope. Uh, yeah, you can see it in the camera. But it makes it nice because instead of it being just a square, so it kind of conforms to your body. And depending on how you have it, or you can slide this up, it'll raise the back of your rifle up. But basically, you shooting. Um, used this quite a bit yesterday. The good thing is, is this is a big thing to carry around, but it doesn't weigh anything. But this makes an exceptionally good seat for when you're waiting for your turn. You got something to put your ass on instead of standing all day. <laughs> so use that a lot i <laughs> use that a lot i sat on it other people sat on it uh chris beck had a nice chair which was even way better than this but i needed to carry this to the stages anyways but i would say that a chair a fold-up chair if you feel like carrying the extra weight is probably going to be better but this works good one of the things uh uh you can do to make this even better is willard 
if you guys you guys know Willard out there, he might even be in the comment section right now. He actually took about I don't know two to three inches all the way along this thing on the bottom, and he rubberized it with a type of like bed liner coating or like a rubber lining coating, which makes it a little more durable, especially if you're gonna you know put it on the rocks and some other spots. But that, I thought that was kind of cool, and it also kind of when you got it slung it'll kind of grab in your clothes a little bit better and less likely to move around so just something that's cheap that you can upgrade throw some paint on it and make that work what else do i got so those of you guys that reload yeah flex seal would probably work great i haven't used it so i'm not sure how it works on like fabrics so if you guys have never heard of ep integrations um in the mail Mr. Todd, his uh, YouTube channel is Elster's Rifle and Reloading. And he makes, he makes some pretty awesome, very simplified annealers for a great price. But they just got done releasing these. The prototypes and all that stuff are done. And his, uh, what was it called? His patent pending, all that stuff's been patent pended in. Pended it? Appended it in. So it's been patent pended it in. No, but you know, he's basically covered himself now so people can't steal his, his design. But what you see here is three pieces. So a lot of the times, depending on what you're shooting, especially if you're shooting like smaller calibers and you have like the red, uh, who makes the red ones? RCBS or whatever. I have, I have like three trays downstairs, but I can't remember who makes it. They're pretty sloppy because they're not made for that round you're making. It's basically big enough to uh, carry is a Hornady big country? Yeah, I'm not sure. But pretty much there's a ton of slop in them. So when you're reloading, sometimes, you know, you're loading and you bump the tray. You know, and stuff's trying to fall over. You can actually put your cases in here and then tighten these up. And then you don't have to worry. I'm going to flip this over. Hopefully they don't fall out. <laughs> but, um... You can lock them in tighter so they don't fall out, but reloading, you're usually taking them out, putting them back in kind of deal. So you want them tighter, but you know, they're still made to fall out because you got to take them out of the case sometimes. But really cool program. They did a good job of these. So that's kind of what it looks like, but it's all billeted aluminum. It's got uh, two knobs here to tighten down the tension, keep the center piece from moving around. So pretty cool if you guys are into reloading and want some nice, nice loading trays or loading blocks. What else do we got? Uh, Ortiz, you still on here? Ortiz hooked me up. This was a while ago. I actually put, actually put one of them right here. So Sniper's Unknown sticker. This is one of them that he had hooked me up with. How cheap are they? They're, they're not... They're not, uh, they're not cheap. I don't know the price right off the bat. He had sent me one and I had ordered one. I think it was a hundred bucks. But uh, Ortiz had sent me some cool ass Snipers Unknown, also known as the Suck. The Snipers Unknown Challenge. So that one's pretty cool. Uh, that one's really cool. If you guys have never seen this, Look into the Sniper's Unknown Challenge, or the SUC, the Suck, um, out of South Carolina. What are you doing with Ely Ammo giveaway? Patrick Smith. I just got it, man. I ain't giving it away. I just finally found a lot that actually works well in my Voodoo 360. I'm hoping to bring my numbers up of hits so that I can do better at the matches. And then I got a red one as well. So if you guys are interested, or maybe you guys are thinking about shooting uh, a team challenge with your buddy, you know, you got a good shooting buddy that you wanna go try out. This is a, an amazing, amazing uh, place to go shoot. This is actually a GTI, and it is a, an amazing facility. It looks like you're playing, I'm not a big gamer kind of guy, but uh, I know like Call of Duty and stuff, you're in these huge buildings and you're shooting out to far distances. I think it's 1,400 yards. 
for the primary shooter and 600 and in for your secondary. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. Plan is to shoot that with uh, Mr. Hedges. So we should have fun coming up in October. October, October. So that's kind of the, some of the updates. Let me uh, sneak back over here. Wow, you got yourself a whole four weeks worth of ammo. <laughs> I am jealous of all the ammo. Ace and all. If you guys are looking for ammo, don't just go buy ammo, lot test it. That's uh, kind of the reason why I'm showing this stuff off. I'm not showing it off because I want to go, hey, look at me, I'm cool, I got ammo. But it, it's more of, hey, I, I'm, I'm doing what I say. I'm finding a lot of ammo that works, and now I'm trying to buy a bunch of it so that I don't have to deal with trying to find every, every three months a different box of ammo that works well in the rifle. So to alleviate all that, I'm hoping this will help. And I say I'm hoping this will help because you never know. It may, maybe that one box that I tested, it didn't work great. So where can I buy it from and when are you switching guns? I'm actually, I'm actually switching back to the 360 right after I do some lot testing. So on the 18th, I'm going to VOD and uh, I'm going to learn some 22 PRS from Chris Simmons. He's putting on a, he's putting on a class basically. He only takes like five students at a time, and I just want to see um, what things he can help me with you know because uh, i could definitely use help i'm pretty sure all of us could use help and uh i'm gonna see where he can help me and hopefully that class helps to make me a better uh 22 long rifle shooter and in turn that should help with basically center fire stuff as well hopefully we'll see we shall see So let me tell you where I got the ammo from because I think there was a receipt in here. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, let me fold this up. I don't want you guys sending me uh, bombs in the mail. There we go. Now, I'm going to show you the price tag. <laughs> Because unfortunately, it is what it is. It's very expensive, and a lot of things I had to save up for, and I went and did it. Didn't want to do it. I didn't want to hit the button that said purchase, buy, because it's super, stupid expensive. But I did save 50 cents a box by buying it. So if, if I'm the guy that's going to the store and running around trying to find, a, you know, five boxes of ammo so I can shoot the next match. And then guess what? Next match, I probably have to, or two matches from then, I gotta go figure out what lot works again. I don't wanna do that. So in turn, I, I think I played it the smart way and I bought all the ammo. Cause I know I can get rid of the ammo if, if I needed to. So I could call it an investment, but I can call it not having to hunt for ammo later. So kilos, shooting sports. And you can see there if it gets, it is a whole lot of money. And unfortunately, I'm gel, or, uh, embarrassed to even show you that cost. But it is what it is. Yeah, see, Treefeller says 30 to $50 here. That's 